have a few minutes for questions for this group. I know there's a question over here. I know there's a question over here. And if you have a question, put your hand up and we'll pass you the mic. Hi, this is for uh, Leandro. Um, now, I liked your focus on solution journalism, and I think we could use a lot more of that here. And I'm glad you're going to do that down in Sao Paulo. Do you have an example of something like a problem in Sao Paulo that how you might approach that with your solution journalism? Yeah, yeah. In recent times, uh, like California, for example, had a serious drop in Sao Paulo. Sometimes you do a joke here among the Brazilians that you are water refugees because you are left when the drop was really serious. Then I wrote a piece for a, a very big media outlet in Brazil about water, the water crisis and how to solve it and how to inspire action. And then it was sort of a test because this was back in January. And then I received a lot of Facebook messages and so on. People saying, may I use your article to do a, a meeting on my building and how to, uh, and to inform people how serious is the problem and how you can solve this problem. And this for me, it was really great because then I just started receiving random uh, messages on Facebook and a lot of people just friend me on Facebook and say, no, I like that article, I want to do something. And now I want to use that article in the school. And I know when you think about why I, well, a lot, uh, some years ago when I became a journalist, I guess this is one of the reasons I become a journalist, you know, to see uh, things getting real, f things really helping people to make real things. Anyone else? Next, next question. question. Who's got something for one of the members? The, the uh, gentleman with the North Korea website. I was actually excited to see some potential revenue projections in your presentation. That was great. Uh, I guess my question is I was a little, little surprised at how, not that they weren't nice, but how low they were based on your current traffic and also your content licensing. Can you, were you, are you just conservative in your estimates, or how did you come up with those figures? Yeah, we, we are conservative. Um, but I think, yeah, with a with a professional sales team with experience selling, um, you know, doing B two B sales on a, a specialist public publication, those could be certainly a lot higher. And in terms of the traffic, we have a porous paywall, um, similar to the New York Times. You get X free articles before it kicks in. And while we do have those big swings in traffic, for a lot of people. That's coming through Reddit. Something will be number one on Reddit for an evening on the West Coast, and we'll just get a flood, like a real ton of traffic. But it's not necessarily repeat stuff, uh, and it can be quite news sensitive as well. Mm -hmm. This is uh, for Jenna. Um, you mentioned one of the weaknesses of, of talking about climate change, that this is uh, something that is very difficult to to make people actually take action. It's not uh, an environmental problem that it's like next to me, like in my backyard, like others. Um, and, and also sometimes we can think that uh, uh, what we can do is very small compared to a, what a country can do or what an industry can do. Uh, so how are you gonna achieve that to make it interesting, which is uh, a problem that I've had as a journalist? Um. I think what I'm going for, like from the start, is just kind of making people more aware of what the cost of different things is. I, it may be small, but just like being able to make a choice and like having a context for what the weight of something is and, and compare it to something else is not something that we have any like understanding of right now. So I think that before we can look at those big picture changes, we have to start somewhere and we have to understand exactly what the weight of everything that we do is. So. The explainers were kind of about bringing that awareness to people to have somewhere to start. Any others for this group? Okay. Uh, this question is for Rebecca. Um, so you alluded to this, I think, towards the end of your presentation in terms of um, kind of improving or increasing political engagement amongst millennials. Uh, can you just talk a little bit more about that vision? Are you talking about relating it to content to campaigns or voter registration? Um, just your thoughts on that. Um, great, I'm really glad you asked that question. So um, 
I guess I'll start by saying there, there's sort of three. So in the last uh, election, there was only a 50% voter turnout for millennials, which sounds like not that bad, but it's way lower than past generations. And there's sort of three main reasons why people don't vote. The first is that uh, most people don't feel informed enough about the issues or the candidates to feel like they can uh, vote, and that's sort of like the first issue we're tackling. The second is that it's sort of a pain. Um, in only 17 states right now, can you even register online to vote in 2015? It's like insane. Um, and the third reason, which is the deeper um, problem, which is what our sort of broader vision is focused on, is that people don't vote because they feel like their vote doesn't make an impact anymore because the system, political system and government is so dysfunctional as a whole, that they don't feel like their vote makes an immediate impact. And so that's sort of the longer term issue that we want to tackle um, in sort of figuring out like what are new innovative ways that we can create in the digital space sort of through our platform that allow people to take action that actually feels like they're making an immediate impact. and and. I, I say that this is sort of our larger vision because we don't know exactly what those actions are yet, but that's sort of what we're focused on in the long term right now and thinking ahead and sort of taking in uh, data and user feedback and figuring out like how can we design a future product that, that lets people participate um, and, make, and make a more impactful action. So, yeah. Do we have one more? Anyone? No? All right. Oh, oh, one, one. Another quick one, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, this question's for Quang. Um, I was just curious how newsrooms would typically kind of measure the effectiveness of uh, the data journalism components. I think you are potentially providing a great alternative to investing in you know hiring data specialists, but kind of how would they typically you know measure effectiveness and how do you approach that conversation? So that's that's one issue that I'm trying to tackle as well. So I'm trying to measure like the newsrooms that I train and what is the difference before and after the training. So I am in the midst of doing it um, by accessing into their analytics uh, tool. Some of them use Chartbeat, some of them use uh, Google Analytics. So basically you measure whether those stories with data components or data driven stories, whether they gain better, higher time span. We're looking at time span because I believe time span is a better measurement of engagement with your audience instead of clicks. So I'm in the midst of uh, developing like um, a, a metric system so that I can better, better evaluate um, what are the impacts that I created for those newsrooms. And those data can be used you know, for other newsrooms to tell them that, you know, see, um, data journalism um, can be better, you know, can, can, can bring a lot of uh, um, audience and engagement to your, to your newsroom. So you should try to experiment with that. Great, thank you very much. Now one more great group. Thank you.